Hey, Jemai. Um, hey, how's it going? All right. What was your reaction initially to the trade? And do you see this as maybe a better opportunity for you here because of, you know, they're in a rebuild phase and are obviously looking at younger players? Uh, you know, my first reaction was a little bit of shock. You know, it's a definitely something different if you've never been traded before. So receiving a phone call right after a workout uh, and being told most likely later in the day that I'll be traded to Baltimore, my first reaction was like, oh, man, I'm getting traded. <laughs> And uh, but then right after that, once I kind of um, got over the initial shock factor of the phone call, I was really excited. I, I definitely knew this was an organization that, you know, wanted guys that were young, hungry players, wanted guys that could be developed into great players. And I definitely think that I, I'm a good fit in this organization and, and the team around me already uh, has been great. The staff has been great and uh, I've loved every minute of it so far. Rich Dubroff, you're up next. Hey, Jemai, uh, you were originally an outfielder and then you moved to uh, to second base. Uh, do you feel comfortable at second? And and do you, do you like the opportunity to, to move around? Uh, yeah, no, I definitely feel comfortable at second. I made the transition in 2018. And, you know, that first year was a lot of early work, a lot of reps, really trying to figure out who I was going to be at second base. And kind of letting go of the, the outfield a little bit that first year to really hang on to everything I could learn from the infield sense. And, you know, now uh, a few years later, I do feel really comfortable there. And I definitely think that uh, at some point I will go back and forth between the outfield and the infield. Um, but no, I, I definitely feel comfortable at second base. And if that's where they see my role uh, being, I love it and, and I'm excited for it. So definitely enjoy it and looking forward to it. John Miola, you're up. Jemiah, you seem like you really – things really started clicking for you towards the end of that 2019 season in AA and carrying that into the fall league. Where do you think you're at in, in your progression developmentally and how did everything that happened last year in terms of not having a full season impact that as you prepare to try to make this team? Uh, you know, 2019 was definitely a weird year. I was dealing with uh, a lot of swing changes and thankfully by about all-star break, I just kind of went back to what felt right to me, went back to what I felt like I could have the most success with and, uh, thankfully put it together, had a good second half campaign from, uh, pretty much, I guess, July to the end of the season ish and, uh, took it into the fall league again, uh, just continued to work continue to do the things that I do well and really capitalize on the opportunity that I have to work. So knowing that going into 2020, that spring training, uh, I had a lot of fun. I was ready and obviously get cut short because of Corona, but continued to work. I knew that we could be back in two weeks or we could be back in two months. So I was going to stay ready for the opportunity no matter what. And then when I got the call to come out to the 60 player pool, uh, I got even more excited just because I knew that I was going to be not only around uh, the normal 25 man roster all the time, being able to learn from those guys, being able to learn from the coaching staff, players, I mean, every single person up there, but I knew I was going to get a lot of reps to continue to work on the things that I do well. So it was definitely exciting. I mean, it was definitely more work than I would get in a normal season just because of how small the player pool is and how individualized things were when we were at Long Beach. So I definitely feel like I got my work in and it definitely gave me an opportunity to continue to emphasize those good habits and really try to get rid of those bad habits in a game sense where it's not technically going on the books, but you're still competing as if it is. So for me, it was a great, a great environment and a great place for really to work on the things that I thought I really needed to work on. Joe Trezza, you're up. Hey, Jemai. You, you come from a, a family of athletes. Can you tell us a little bit of how that shaped you? And if you have time, can you um, explain the decision to play baseball over football? Uh, yeah, uh, definitely come from an athletic family. I definitely have had a lot of influence from them just from a young age. I mean, we were traveling to several different parks on the weekend for baseball and then Friday night spending them at a high school watching football games or, you know, as we got older, Saturdays were – going to App State, going to Notre Dame to watch uh, XYZ game. And I really do think it helped me 
figure out who I wanted to be as a person, uh, being immersed in a football environment for so long from having a father that played in college, played in the NFL. Um, you definitely had a, a very big football influence in our household. And obviously we, we all kind of fell root to playing that. We all gravitated towards the sport because that's what we were in majority of the time. So, you know, we were always told to kind of try different things out, try different sports. You know, we all played football, basketball, baseball. And as I got older, I found myself gravitating more towards the baseball side. And, you know, I loved football. I loved being around it. I love the environment. The adrenaline that you get playing uh, is completely different than the adrenaline you get on the baseball side. But I just, I felt like if I were to play football, I'd constantly be compared to my brothers. Uh, I felt like my identity would kind of get lost in the mix, just being compared. Everything I do, it looks like, you know, this brother, he does it like this brother. And uh, I didn't want that for myself. I, I really wanted to make my own my own identity in this world. And I knew that uh, not everybody outside of my family and kind of inner circle would be on board with that. Everybody's expecting me to play football. Everyone's expecting me to kind of do what the family did. And baseball, I just gravitated towards it. I absolutely loved it. I, I kind of knew there was a difference because I loved going to baseball practice. And I felt like that was where I really got the most stress release from if I ever felt stressed or something like that I wanted to do something baseball related I wanted to go hit I wanted to go you know take ground balls I wanted to go just be around the game and so I made the decision uh to stop playing football in high school after talking with my family everybody was on board and you know people in my community didn't agree with it they didn't see why I was why I was doing this and I didn't really care I didn't need everybody to see what I saw. I didn't need everybody to believe in me because I knew at the end of the day, this is what I wanted to do. This was where I put all my focus and time and effort into. So if they weren't on kind of the metaphorical train, then, you know, they're getting left behind. Uh, my entire family understood. My entire family agreed. They were kind of waiting for me to stop playing football or when I would stop playing football, whenever it would be, because they all knew I wanted to play baseball. So those who were important to me, uh, I had all their support and that was all I really needed and uh, ultimately made the decision. And, you know, thankfully here I am. <laughs> so I think it uh, paid off just a little bit so far. Thank, thank you for that thoughtful and thorough answer. No, of course. Thank you. Stan Charles, you're up. Jumai, I got to tell you, that was a fascinating answer to listen through and, uh, and working through your process. Uh, the industry as a whole in baseball is always looking now for these athletic players that can play multiple positions. Is that something that excites you or is it deflating at all if a team wants to use you at three or four places rather than just giving you a position? Uh, no, it excites you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You can continue. Sorry about that. No, or earning the uh, one position. You know, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no. Uh, I think it excites me. I mean, obviously being able to play multiple position gives you more opportunity to be on the field and be on a club. I mean, a great example of that is, is Kike Hernandez. I mean, played all over the place for the Dodgers, ended up hitting, ends up getting a contract to go to Boston to most likely play uh, an everyday position somewhere. And, you know, Ben Zobris, you know, there've been several guys that have come through that have made a career off of being able to play multiple positions. And I always felt like if I were to add multiple positions to my, to my uh, kind of game, it would only help further progress me and put me ahead of certain people because of the versatility that I bring to the table. So knowing that it definitely excites me. I don't think it deflates me at all because I mean, who knows, let's say I end up, you know, hot start hitting right from the jump. I find a everyday place. I find somewhere, whether that be, you know, left, center, right, second, third, short, whatever it may be, it gives me an opportunity to be on the field. And it gives me an opportunity to, if I'm bouncing around everywhere and playing well, it gives me a chance to help the team in several different ways rather than just being locked into one position and playing that one position uh, the entire time. So I definitely think it's something that is exciting and it's definitely something that I, I'm open to doing especially if it helps the team. If they want me to play left for two games, play center the next game, play second for four games, 
um, I'm perfectly fine with that. You know, I'm going to, the minute I get on the field, no matter where I am, I'm going to play until the game's over. So if that's at various positions, I'm, I'm very excited for the opportunity. Melanie Newman, you're up. Hey, Jemai, um, two fellow Georgians and the only East Coast time was unfortunately in Mobile as well. So sorry that you uh, dealt with that. But um, what's it like now that you kind of do get to be a little closer to home being on the East Coast after so much time with, you know, spring training, fall league, obviously trending toward L.A., just being on the opposite end? Uh, no, it's amazing. Uh, this is the first time that I've actually been able to drive to spring training. So instead of having to take a about a five and a half hour flight from uh, Georgia to Arizona or five hour, four hour, wherever it may be, I uh, had a nice, you know, seven and a half hour straight shot down, down to Sarasota. So I absolutely loved it. I know my family, the minute I got uh, traded, they were really excited for the opportunity to be able to come see me play more. It's really hard when, you know, I'm one of six kids. So um, we have a lot of moving parts and me being all the way out on the West coast makes it a little difficult for everybody to come and see me. So I know my mom and, and everybody is really excited to finally catch a game. That's not having to go all the way across from Georgia to California. Uh, so to speak, I mean, a lot of our games are East coast, wherever that may be, they'll definitely get, uh, opportunities to come see me play. I mean, I'm excited for it. Anytime my family gets to come and see me play, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I know they came in double A uh, to see me play in Chattanooga a couple of times, Mobile, obviously, a couple of times. So, you know, having your family get to watch you do what you love to do. I mean, that's all I can ask for. We have time for one final question. Mark Viviano, go ahead. Hey, Jemai. Uh, sounds like you really have uh, are excited about being on a young team that's developing young players. Just curious, your, your point of view on this is interesting in that you come from, you made your major league debut with a lineup that had Trout and Pujols and Rendon. I mean, big money, win now organization. What's that transition like for a competitor knowing that this is sort of a long range project you're now buying into? You know, I definitely think that being around these guys that are, that are younger, um, we're all on the same page. Everybody understands each other. Everybody understands the, the hunger, the kind of being counted out that, you know, people are giving us. We, we are a younger team, but, you know, we're ready to play with the best and we want to play with the best. Um, that's the vibe I get from the locker room just being in it for the first few days is that everybody wants to win over here, no matter, you know, what anybody says, no matter what, uh, you know, who, who counts us out, who doesn't count us out. Um, at the end of the day, we just want to win. So if that's with a young team, great. Um, but we're also, you know, we're really leaning on one another. I, I've leaned on already a few guys already since I've been here. Um, so it's it's definitely nice to to have that. You know, we have a lot of good players in this locker room, a lot of guys that I really can learn from. And, you know, being closer to them in, in age, they've been through similar experiences that I'm currently going through rather than, you know, the guys who were – rooted in you know 10 years my senior so to speak like I have more guys that are you know two three years older than me that you know last year they were in my shoes so they can kind of walk me through the process of everything that I'm going through so I'm definitely excited to be here I'm definitely excited for everything that's going to happen you know this season and the coming seasons um, it's definitely somewhere that you know, I do feel really comfortable. And, you know, with the Angels, I was able to learn from a lot of guys. You know, we did have the the Trouts, the Rendones, Pujols, Upton. I mean, you can go down the lineup and it's guys that have been around the game and have had unbelievable success in the game. And being able to learn from those guys was unbelievable. So, so from both sides of the spectrum, I'm getting to learn two different things from two different people and two completely different scenarios. I go from a, an older vet lineup that you know they really put it together so I get to learn everything that they've been through and kind of soak it in there and then on the other side is all the guys that are trying to get there and if not are already there so we're all obviously moving to have those long careers and go through those experiences so being able to go through them with a large group of guys together I feel like is what's gonna ultimately make us not only team chemistry good but make us good in the long run I do feel like we we have a lot of talent here and I'm definitely excited to be a part of it.